The ethereal glow of the harvest moon bathed the cobblestone streets in an eerie luminescence as Detective Samantha Ray stepped out of her car, the click of her heels echoing through the stillness. The air was thick with the coppery tang of blood and the sickly sweet rot of death. Another body. Another twisted soul snuffed out like a candle. Ducking under the police tape, Samantha made her way towards the huddled mass on the ground, a macabre silhouette haloed in flashing red and blue. Her stomach clenched, but she pushed down the rising bile. She'd seen too much in this line of work to flinch now. What have we got? She asked, voice clip. Female, late thirties. Multiple stab wounds to the chest and abdomen. The officer's face was grim under his peak cap. It's a bad one, detective. Real messy. Samantha crouched down, the blood seeping into the knees of her slacks. Deft fingers snapped on latex gloves as she peeled back the sheet. Her breath left her in a rush. The woman's face, slackened in death, bore an uncanny resemblance to her own. The same russet waves, spilling across the pavement. The same constellation of freckles dusting porcelain cheeks. A scream trapped behind bloodless lips. But it was her eyes that made Samantha's heart stutter in her chest wide and glassy, staring into oblivion. And yet, in their sea-green depths, an accusation. A warning. Samantha knew those eyes. Knew that face. It was seared into her memory like a cattle brand, despite the chasm of years between then and now. Lillian, she whispered. Her father's most recent wife. The one he traded her mother in for like an old shoe, discarding a lifetime of love for a younger model. The responding officer shifted uneasily beside her. You know her. Eh, it wasn't a question. In their line of work, coincidences were fairy tales. Everything was entangled, a Gordian knot of cause and effect. And Samantha was suddenly certain that this string led straight to her own tangled roots. Notify the family, she bit out, straightening. I need to make a call. Her heels sounded like gunshots as she strode back to her car, each step an accusation. How long had it been since she'd spoken to her father? Years? A decade? After he remarried, started a shiny new family, it was easier to excise that part of herself like a tumor. Carve out the rot before it could fester. But now the past had come knocking with a vengeance. And as much as she wanted to deadbolt the door, Samantha knew she had to answer. For Lillian. For the victims yet to come. For herself. With a shaking hand, she scrolled through her contacts until she found the number she'd never quite been able to delete. The line, once. Twice. Daddy. Die. She hated how small her voice sounded. How much like the little girl who used to dance on his shoes. Samantha? Even through the crackling phone line, his voice was just as she remembered. Smooth as aged whiskey with an undercurrent of something darker. To what do I owe this rare pleasure? She swallowed hard. Lillian's dead. Silence. Then, I see. No shock. No grief. Just cool, clipped acknowledgement. It made Samantha's molars ache. Multiple stab wounds. Body dumped in an alley downtown. Her voice trembled with barely leashed accusation. Know anything about that? Now why would I know anything about my wife's murder? A beat. Unless, of course, you're accusing me of something. Samantha's hand fisted at her side. Should I be? A dark chuckle. Oh, Samantha. So suspicious. So jaded. I thought I raised you better than that. You didn't raise me at all, she hissed. You replaced me. Remember? Careful, darling. Bitterness is unbecoming. A sigh crackled across the line. I suppose you'll want to ask your usual tedious questions. Fine. Dot Kayim. Come by the house tomorrow. Let's catch up properly. This isn't a social call, she snapped. It's a murder investigation. And right now, everyone's a suspect. Even you. I'm wounded, he drawled. Is that any way to speak to your father? I'll see you tomorrow. She punched the end button before he could twist the knife any deeper. Pocketing the phone, Samantha tilted her head back against the headrest and closed her eyes. Tried to steady her galloping heart.
What had she just stepped into? What dark corner of her past had she just dragged into the light? But there was no going back now. The gauntlet had been thrown. The bets cast. It was time to uncover just how deep the rot in her family tree went, and if it traced all the way to the gnarled roots. The sun was a baleful eye glaring down on the sprawling Ravenhill Manor as Samantha guided her car up the winding drive. Spanish moss dripped from the ancient oaks lining the path like tear-soaked lace, and the air hung heavy with the sickly perfume of crushed magnolias. A touch cloying. A touch rotten. Like everything else in this festering corner of her past. The house rose before her like a sepulcher, all faded whitewash and imposing columns. The kind of place Faulkner would wax poetic about, steeped in southern Gothic charm. But to Samantha, it had only ever been a mausoleum. A pretty marble tomb to entomb the memories of a family long decayed. Gravel crunched under her boots as she climbed the front steps, each one a Sisyphean effort. She'd sworn she would never set foot here again, Sworn she'd salted the earth where her roots once gripped, so she could never be tempted back. Yet here she was, dragged back into the morass by a murder she was sickeningly certain would lead straight to this rotting door. Stealing herself, she pressed the buzzer. Seconds later, the heavy oak slab swung inward, revealing a face she'd once cherished above all others. Chiseled and handsome under a sweep of silver hair, her father's visage had scarcely changed in the years since she'd walked out of his life for good. Perhaps a few more lines bracketing the patrician nose. A bit more frost at the temples. But the eyes. Those were exactly as she remembered. Pale, piercing blue, holding all the warmth of an arctic berg. Samantha, dot, ot. He drew out the syllables of her name like he was savoring a fine cognac. You're looking well. Her jaw tightened. I'm not here to chat. Manners, darling. I did raise you better than that. He stepped back, ushering her inside with a sweep of his hand. I was sorry to hear about dear Lillian. Dreadful business. Simply dreadful. The words were rote, polished smooth from frequent use. No genuine grief roughened their edges. Samantha tamped down the urge to grab him by the lapels and shake until something real fell out. Where were you last night? No preamble. No niceties. There was no room for either in a house built on the bones of pretense. He arched a knowing brow. You never were one to mince words. I can appreciate that. He led her into the cavernous drawing room, the click of her heel swallowed by the plush Persian carpets. Crystal decanters winked in the watery sunlight trickling through floor-to-ceiling windows, and the faint strains of Chopin rustled the stale air. The whole place was a museum. A shrine to a life half-lived. It made Samantha want to scream. Your whereabouts? She bit out through clenched teeth. Last night, between the hours of 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. You think I killed her, don't you? He settled himself in a wing-backed armchair, crossing one leg over the other. Casual, down while, at ease. Like they were discussing the weather rather than the brutal murder of his wife. You think I skewered poor Lily like a Christmas ham, and left her to rot in some dirty back alley. Byla scowled the back of Samantha's throat, and her fingers curled into fists so tight she feared her bones might splinter through the skin. Did you? He scoffed, reaching for one of the decanters. Amber liquid sloshed into a cut crystal tumbler. Please. I'm a businessman, not a butcher. I have people for that sort of thing. She couldn't tell if he was joking. Couldn't parse the glimmer in his eye dancing between mirth and malice. She'd never been able to read him. Not really. He'd always been a cipher. A locked room mystery in a bespoke suit. Just answer the question. Her voice trembled. She hated herself for it. I was here. All night. Scotch and Schubert, as is my wont in the evenings. He took an indolent sip from his glass. Check with the staff if you must. They'll confirm it. Of course they would. They were his people. His creatures. They'd swear he was at the second coming if he demanded it. But Samantha dutifully jotted it down in her notebook, 
the scratching of her pen loud in the crushing quiet. Know of anyone who might want to hurt Lillian? Any enemies? Jilted lovers? At that, a spark lit his eyes. Something cruel and cagey. You're asking the wrong questions, my girl. She waited, pen poised over paper. Let him fill the silence. Let him hang himself with it if that's what this was. Uh, careful unraveling done by his own hand. You shouldn't be asking who wanted to hurt Lillian. You should be asking who wanted to hurt me. He took another sip, gaze never leaving hers over the cut crystal rim. And you should start by looking at the guests at her engagement party last week. I'm sure the guest list will be illuminating. Samantha frowned. Engagement party? The words were curdled milk on her tongue. Lillian was already married. To you. His smile was a blade in the shadows of his face. Oh, did I forget to mention? Clumsy of me. Lillian and I were divorcing. Quite amicably. She was newly engaged to a dashing young entrepreneur. Someone more suitable to her age bracket. He set down his glass, folded his hands. I believe you know him, actually. Her blood ran to ice. An awful premonition gripped her, squeezing like a fist. Who? Who? He told her. And the world tilted on its axis. Sebastian, she whispered. A prayer. A curse. Sebastian Asher. Her stepbrother. The boy with sun-gilt hair and a devil-may-care grin who'd been her stalwart companion through the turbulent years of her father's second marriage. The gangly teenager who'd snuck her cigarettes and filled her head with dreams of running away from the gorgon's nest of their family. The man she'd loved with all the reckless abandon of youth. Until the day he'd left without a word, crushing her brittle bird heart to dust. Always thought there was a spark between you two. Her father's voice sliced through the roaring in her ears. Puppy love? Quite sweet, really. Pity he had to go and propose to my wife, of all people. Samantha closed her eyes, willed the floor to open up and swallow her. Anything to escape this moment. This awful, impossible revelation. Of course, Lillian couldn't go through with marrying her stepson's childhood sweetheart. His voice took on a mocking lilt. Think of the scandal. So she ended it. Broke poor Sebastian's heart. A pause. A slash of a smile. And now she's dead. Samantha shook her head. Backing away. Needing distance. Needing air. You're not suggesting. I'm not suggesting anything. Merely stating facts. He spread his hands a king presiding over his empire of bones and secrets. But it seems to me if you're looking for someone with motive to kill my darling wife, her jilted fiancé is a good place to start. No, doll. The word burst from Samantha's lips. No, Sebastian would never... Even as she said it, doubt unfurled in her stomach. It had been years. A decade. More. The boy she'd loved had vanished into the mists of time, replaced by a stranger. A cipher. Just like her father. Believe what you want, my dear. He stood, straightening his cuffs. But if I were you, I'd start digging. Peel back all the pretty layers and see what squirms in the muck. <sighs> he moved to walk past her. Paused. Placed a hand on her shoulder, and she flinched at the contact. Oh, and Samantha? Welcome home. Then he was gone, leaving her alone in the cavernous room that had once been her childhood haven. The room where she and Sebastian had spun their dreams like cotton candy, fragile and sweet. Now it was a crypt, haunted by the ghosts of might-have-beens. She stumbled out of the house, gulping great lungfuls of damp, mossy air, pressing a hand to her chest, trying to quiet the sickening thud of her heart. She had a lead now, a thread, to follow into the labyrinth. But at the end of it, she feared, lay a monster with eyes of summer blue. A monster wearing the face of her deepest, darkest longing. The revelation of Sebastian as both her long-lost love and the potential killer shook Samantha to her core. A emotional earthquake that left her reeling. 
She wanted to, to deny it, to scream that it couldn't be true. Not Sebastian. Not the boy with the ready laugh, who'd once been her port in the storm, that was their tumultuous upbringing under Malcolm Ray's imperious thumb. He'd been her ally, her confidant, the one person who understood in marrow deep ways what it was like to live in this mausoleum of a manor. The memories came in fits and starts as she drove away from Raven Hill, flashes of sunlight amidst the shade. Sitting cross-legged on the sun-dappled lawn, weaving daisy chains to crown each other's unruly hair. Balancing on the creek stones down in the gully out back, breath hitching as he took her hand to steady her. The electric thrill of his fingers laced with hers, somehow illicit despite its innocence reading aloud to each other from battered volumes of Brothers Grimm late into the night, huddled together by the flickering firelight with their backs to the door like conspirators. Kindred. Da. Two odd ducks in this moneyed menagerie where image was all, and love was a foreign tongue. Until it wasn't. Until the gangly limbs turned sinewy, and the lingering looks grew charged, smoldering like banked coals ready to catch. She'd been sixteen to his eighteen the first time he kissed her, really kissed her, all sweet scotch and desperate hunger under the weeping willows down by the pond. A forbidden melding of a not-quite-brother and a maybe-someday sister who should have known better. But, oh, it had felt like flying. Like falling. A swoop behind her navel like missing a step in the dark. They'd kept it a secret, this fragile, unfurling thing between them. A clandestine affair conducted in hushed whispers and stolen moments, fingers fumbling under starched uniforms and the heady slide of skin on skin in the humid dark. A love story scrawled in the margins of their lives, never daring to bleed into the neat lines of their family dynamic, lest it be edited out by censorious hands. Because he was Malcolm's golden boy, the son and heir apparent, and she was just the daughter. The dreamer the one constantly found wanting under their father's exacting eye. They could never be anything more than ships passing in the night, stealing a moment's harbor in the lee of each other. Or so she'd thought. Until that fateful morning, she'd awoken to find Sebastian's room stripped bare. His closet empty, his treasures gone. No note. No goodbye. Just a cold indentation on the pillow where his head used to lie, and the phantom ache of his hands on her skin. He'd left her, abandoned her to the wolves without so much as a backward glance. And she'd hardened her heart, shored up her walls, vowing never to let anyone crack her open and scoop out her insides again. Love was a luxury she could ill afford in this gilded cage, and so she'd buried it. Buried him. Consigned their star-crossed affair to the realm of foolish fancy and moved on. Or tried to, at least. But now here she was, chasing a killer who may well wear a lover's face, and those old wounds pulsed anew like they'd never really healed at all. The hurt and the longing twined around her heart like barbed wire, thorny and choking, as she guided her car through the live oak tunnel towards town. She had to find him, had to look into those fathomless eyes and demand the truth, no matter how it flayed her. And if he was the monster at the end of this book, she'd have to write a new ending in Blood and Bullets. Because no one, not even a green-eyed ghost from her past, could be allowed to tear more holes in a soul already so riddled. The Ravenhill Police Department was a squat, nondescript building on the edge of town, remarkable only in its unremarkability. Samantha had spent countless hours here, poring over case files and evidence logs under the flickering fluorescence, the smell of burnt coffee and stale sweat her constant companions. A place of grim purpose, holding vigil over the dark things that crept through the manicured hedgerows of their sleepy hamlet. She shouldered through the door, ignoring the susurrus of whispers that hounded her footsteps. The prodigal daughter returned at last. They'd always viewed her askance, this odd duckling who refused to conform to the Ray family mold. Too opinionated, too inquisitive, to intent on airing the dirty laundry they'd much prefer stay stuffed in the hamper. Her choosing law enforcement had been yet another eschewing of expectations, a far cry from the genteel ladies' luncheons and campaign rallies that comprised her mother's days. Detective. Officer Riley, the rookie who'd first responded to the Lillian Asher crime scene, 
waylaid her before she could reach her office. We got a hit on those rope fibers from the victim's wrists. Samantha froze, pulse kicking into high gear. And? Special order. High end. Die. Only one place in town stocks it. Callahan's marine supply down by the wharf. A lead. A breadcrumb on the trail. She'd take it. Good work. Let me know if they have any record of recent purchases. I want names. She pushed past him into the cramped closet that served as her office, the words on the frosted glass door still a surprise every time she saw them. Debt. S. Ray We. A proclamation. An accusation. Depending on which side of the blue line you stood. Sinking into her chair, she flipped through the slim file on her desk, the particulars of Lillian Asher's death spelled out in crisp black and white. Time of death. Ligature marks. Bowl. Unusual bruising pattern, possibly indicative of a signet ring worn by the attacker. And there, paper clipped to the inside back cover, a glossy candid of the victim on the arm of her smiling fiancé. Sebastian. The years had been kind to him, sharpening the clean lines of his jaw, silvering the temples of his dark hair. But the eyes were the same. Summer blue, placid waters with unseen currents running beneath. Looking at the camera. Looking at her, her finger traced the knife edge of his cheek. A ghost touch. An almost caress. He'd filled out since she last saw him, shoulders straining the confines of his bespoke suit. The consummate image of a wealthy entrepreneur, all sleek lines and manicured charm. So far from the cultish boy who used to roll up his shirt sleeves and read Tennyson to her by the creek. Did he remember those stolen moments? The brush of hands? The heated glances heavy with intent? Or had he shucked them off like an outgrown skin, shedding her along with all the other relics of his youth? Gritting her teeth, she flipped the file closed. Now was not the time for maudlin memories. There was a killer to catch. Asked for answers that could no longer be delayed. Snagging her jacket from the hook, Samantha shrugged into the armor of her profession. Polished badge, shoulder holster, sensible shoes. A woman girded for battle. She had a date with a ghost from her past. And by the time she was through, every secret would be dragged into the unforgiving light. No matter who they damned. The sprawling glass and chrome monstrosity that housed Asher Enterprises loomed before Samantha like a futuristic fortress. All sleek lines and mirrored panes throwing back her hunted expression. A far cry from the crumbling stone manse on the hill where they'd wild away their youth. The shiny facade, a testament to Sebastian's ruthless reinvention. Shedding the trappings of his past like a snake skin. Herself included. Her heels clacked a staccato beat on the marble floor of the lobby as she approached the reception desk. Badges and warrants weren't her style. Not for this. Not when it was so terribly, awfully personal. Samantha Ray for Mr. Asher, she said, injecting a confidence she didn't feel into her voice. He's expecting me. A lie. A gambit. She half hoped the words would prove false, that the elegant woman peering up at her over horn-rimmed glasses would deny her passage, send her away unsatisfied. Anything to delay the inevitable rending, the lancing of the festering wound that throbbed between them. No such luck. With a curt nod and a murmured, of course, he's been awaiting your visit. The woman waved her towards the glass elevators. Penthouse level. You can't miss it. Samantha's finger hovered over the illuminated button, a scant hair's breadth from sealing her fate. She'd rehearsed this moment countless times, girded herself in the unassailable armor of her righteousness, her quest for truth and justice, and an end to the body count piling at their family's feet. But now, mere feet from the finish line, she wavered, hands shaking. Heart thundering against her ribs like a wild thing desperate to escape. Because once she stepped off that elevator, there was no going back. No unringing this particular bell. She'd have to look into those fathomless eyes and dredge the depths for blood. Even if it meant drowning them both. Sucking in a steadying breath, she pressed the button. The elevator whispered to a stop. Doors gliding open to reveal an expansive office that was all understated elegance and muted colors. Plush carpets, sleek furnishings, 
a wall of floor-to-ceiling windows framing a bird's-eye view of their small kingdom. And there, standing sentinel before the glass, a silhouette achingly familiar even after all these years. Sebastian? His name felt like shattered glass on her tongue. He turned, and the breath left her in a rush. Time had refined rather than ravaged, sharpening his boyish beauty into something almost too exquisite to look upon. High cheekbones, sculpted mouth, that proud nose and stubborn chin. And those eyes, God, those eyes, blazing with cold fire in the stark plains of his face. Hello, Sammy. The old nickname struck her like a physical blow, a casual cruelty from smiling lips. Welcome back to the lion's den. Don't. Ound. She hated the quaver in her voice, hated him for putting it there. You don't get to do that. Not anymore. Do what, exactly? He moved towards her with the sinuous grace of a born predator, hands slipping casually into the pockets of his dove gray slacks. Perfectly at ease. Utterly in control. Acknowledge our history? Pretend we're still those lovesick fools necking down by the creek? Lovesick fools. The words lanced through her like one of Lillian's blades, precise and ruthless. Carving to the quick. We were never fools, she managed past the sudden tightness in her throat. What we had, it was real, Sebastian. Precious. Was it? A dark brow arched. Funny, I recall it being tawdry. Sordid. The inevitable result of two broken dolls thrown together in a gilded cage. Every word struck like a blow. Deliberate, thine die. Calculated. But, beneath the urbane sneer, something flickered in those gold-limbed eyes. Something raw and wounded quickly shuddered. She latched onto it like a lifeline, a glimpse of chink in his impenetrable armor. Why are you doing this? Her words came out ragged, scraped, raw. Is this revenge? For the crime of being young and in love? Love? A scoff, harsh and incredulous. Is that what you thought it was? I know it was. The words rang out with a conviction she hadn't known she possessed until that very moment. I felt it, Sebastian. In every look. Every touch. Every secret whisper in the dark. She took a shuddering breath. And I think, under all that shiny new varnish, you did too. For a fraction of a second, the mask slipped, the smooth facade rippling like disturbed water, hinting at dark currents in the depths. Then it was gone, shuddered behind a brutal smile. Oh, Sammy. So naive, even now. He closed the distance between them in two prowling strides, invading her space until the heat of him enveloped her like a fever dream. One elegant hand reached out to rest lightly against her throat, the whorls and loops of a familiar signet ring branding her skin, the bruising pattern from Lillian's neck. Her heart seized. It was you, clever girl. His breath stirred the fine hairs at her temple. Always so quick on the uptake. Must be in the defective ray genes. Samantha jerked back as if scalded, eyes widening in shock. How could you? Tears clawed their way up her throat. She loved you, Sebastian. She was going to be your wife. His smile slashed like a scythe, cruel and cutting. Lily was a means to an end. A tool in the game. Just like you. She stared at him in dawning horror. The mask fully lifted now, the monster underneath like something from their childhood nightmares. All hungry eyes and grasping hands. A game? What game? The long game. His gaze bored into hers, dark and fathomless. The game we've been playing since the first day I darkened the doors of Raven Hill. The disgraced bastard son, infiltrating the impenetrable keep. A humorless laugh. Did you really think our meeting was chance? That? Daddy dearest hadn't handpicked me personally to twist the knife that final notch? Samantha's mind reeled, struggling to make sense of the nonsense. What are you talking about? DNA doesn't lie, Sammy. He reached out to tweak a lock of her hair, mocking and oddly gentle. 
Odd how I share so many distinctive traits with the master of the house. The chin. The eyes. The... He smiled coldly. Turns out dear old dad got around in his misspent youth. Sowing his wild oats in the wrong garden. She shook her head. Vehement denial. No. Oh yes. I'm a ray, through, and through. His eyes glittered like chips of ice. The prodigal son come to claim his birthright. By murdering Lillian. The words tasted like bile. By destroying this family from the inside out? Lillian was just the beginning. The grip on her hair tightened incrementally, acclaiming. The first link in a rusted chain long overdue for breaking. His mouth grazed her ear, a whisper of dark promise. And you, dear Sammy, you're the final piece. The lock that holds it all together. The insinuation hung between them, horrible in its ambiguity. She stared up at him, barely breathing. Afraid to shatter this fragile impasse. Then, the muted ding of the elevator shattered the silence like a gunshot. They whirled as one to see Malcolm striding from the lift, an incongruous figure in his country squire tweeds amongst all the sleek modernity. Sorry to interrupt this touching reunion. His gelid gaze flicked between them, assessing, calculating. But I believe we have some pressing family business to attend to. Malcolm. Sebastian's grip on her loosened, but didn't fully release. I'd say this is a surprise, but... A razor-edged smile. We both know that's not true. Sebastian. A curt nod of acknowledgement. I see you've saved me the trouble of arranging this little tete-a-tete. -tete. Samantha's gaze ping-ponged between the two men, the tension ratcheting up to a teeth-vibrating hum. Forgive me for taking the initiative. Sebastian's tone remained light, almost airy. Belied by the steel in his spine. But I thought it best we lance this particular boil without an audience. Malcolm's thin lips twitched. Squeamish, my boy. How unlike you. Practical. Duh. Sebastian released her then, prowling over to the bar cart to pour himself two fingers of scotch. Neat. Blood has an unfortunate tendency to linger. Especially on Italian marble. Samantha stared at him in slowly dawning horror. Blood. Time. Lillian's blood. The bruises on her throat an exact match for the ring on Sebastian's finger. All the missing pieces clicking into awful clarity. You won't get away with this, she managed through stiff lips, hating the quaver in her voice. I won't let you destroy this family. His smile was a blade in the shadows. Oh, Sammy. Don't you see? He took a considering sip of scotch, gaze never leaving hers over the cut crystal rim. I am this family. The one true heir come to claim his kingdom of ash and bone. Over my dead body. Malcolm's voice was a whip crack in the charged air. Sebastian laughed. An awful sound, devoid of mirth. If you insist. Then, faster than her eye could track, he hurled the crystal tumbler straight at Malcolm's head. It struck with a sickening crack, an explosion of amber liquid and glittering shards. Malcolm stumbled, hand flying to his temple. It came away wet with blood, and his eyes widened. Stunned. Sebastian was on him before he could recover, a blur of speed and savagery. One hand fisted in the older man's lapel, jerking him close. This is for my mother, he snarled. And for every year I had to bow and scrape for your approval, you unrelenting bastard. His other hand plunged a gleaming letter opener into Malcolm's gut. Once. Twice. Three times, the steel sliding home with sickening ease. No. The scream tore from Samantha's throat. She lunged forward, hands grasping, fingers clawing, trying to pull him off. Stop, Sebastian. Stop. He shoved her back with casual cruelty, barely breaking stride as he let Malcolm crumple to the plush carpet. Blood bloomed on the older man's shirt front like a macabre flower, and he let out a wet, rattling gasp. Eyes clouding. Breath slowing. Dying. Dying. 
Samantha crawled to him, heedless of the blood, the glass. Daddy, I... Her voice cracked on a sob. Daddy, stay with me. Ah, I know. Hey, but he was already gone, faded eyes fixed on some distant horizon. Some brighter shore. Leaving her alone with the monster wearing her lover's skin. You see? Sebastian loomed above her, haloed in hideous crimson. He was weak. Broken. A husk of a man unfit to lead this family into the future. He smiled. Roll, dine you? Gone, dear one. But you and I, Sammy. Together, we'll build an empire to last a thousand years. You're insane. She spat the words like venom, heart twisting in her chest. This isn't you, Sebastian. It can't be. Oh, but it is. He crouched down beside her, trailing bloody fingers over her tear-stained cheek. An obscene caress. The real me. The me he created when he chose power over love. Ambition over family. His eyes burned into hers, fathomless and searing. We're two sides of the same tarnished coin, Samantha Ray. The last of a dying breed. No, oh. She shook her head, vehement denial. I'm nothing like you. I will never be like you. We'll see. He straightened, tugging his blood-spattered cuffs back into pristine order. Every inch the poised predator. You'll join me, Sammy. One way or another. It's in the rancid ray blood after all. Never. The word emerged low. Raw. Dot. Ot. A blood oath. I'll die before I let you make me into your twisted puppet. His smile widened. Sharpened. Promise? Then his hands were around her throat, tightening. Squeezing. Died owl. Cutting off air and light and hope until her vision tunneled to a single crimson point. She clawed at him, desperate. Weakening. The fight going out of her in sputtering increments. This was how it ended then. Betrayal and blood, the family legacy come full circle. Her vision grayed at the edges, Sebastian's face swimming above her like some avenging demon. Finish it, she thought dimly. Do it, do it. End this cycle of violence and madness, once and for all. But even as the thought formed, even as oblivion beckoned, defiance stirred beneath her breastbone. A spark. An ember. The tiniest flickering flame of resistance, sputtering but unquenched. No. It couldn't end like this. She wouldn't let this be her story. The final rotted fruit of a poison tree, long overdue for toppling. With the last of her strength, her oxygen-starved muscles screaming in protest, she fumbled for the heavy brass desk lamp just within reach, wrapped trembling fingers around its base, and brought it crashing down on Sebastian's skull. He crumpled with a startled grunt, hands flying to his head. She sucked in air like a drowning woman, spots dancing before her eyes in the sudden rush of blood. But there was no time to recover. No quarter given in this deadly game. She rolled to her feet, staggering. Snatching a discarded letter opener from the pool of her father's blood, she rounded on Sebastian. Predator turned prey in the space of a heartbeat. Do it, he slurred through the crimson gushing down his face. Dark eyes glassy but defiant. Finish it. Claim your birthright. For a moment, she wavered. The letter opener heavy in her hand, the point winking in the low light. Everything in her cried out for vengeance. For retribution. A life for the lives stolen. The family broken on the altar of his twisted ambition. It would be so easy. A flick of the wrist. A squelch of flesh the warm gush of absolution over her hands. Her fingers tightened on the hilt, knuckles whitening, arm tensing, and in his eyes, a flicker, a glimmer, the faintest ember of relief, of longing, daring her to do it, to succumb to the poison chalice of violence, ever their family's ruin. It was that, in the end, that stayed her hand, that spark of kinship, foul, and tainted. The knowledge that to strike now would make his monstrousness her own. 
lock her into the cycle that had destroyed everything she held dear. No, Cho. Her voice shook, but the hand holding the letter opener did not. I won't. I can't. She swallowed hard. Tasting salt and copper. Because that would make me no better than you. No better than him. A single crimson drop fell from the gleaming point, splashing on the tiles between them. A punctuation. An ellipsis. Slowly, so slowly, she lowered her arm, let the blood-stained metal slip from nerveless fingers to clatter on the floor. It rang like a bell. A final knell. I am done. The words scraped her raw throat, heavy with unshed tears, with the weight of history at long last put to rest. With you. With him. With all of the filthy, rotten mess of this family. She straightened, lifting her chin, meeting his gaze, level and clear. I renounce it. I renounce you. I renounce every poison drop of blood and bad memory. Every link of the chain. A shuddering breath. Sharp with pain. Edged in hard-won liberation. I'm free. And so she was. A bird unchained from a wire. A penny unstuck from its groove. Battered and broken, but unbowed. Alive. The police will be here soon, she said. An afterthought. A formality. And when they arrive, I'll point them to you. The monster in our midst, unmasked at last. He laughed then. An awful bubbling sound through smashed teeth and straining lips. Oh, Sammy. My Sammy. Ever the stubborn optimist. His smile stretched. Grotesque, dotty.